Hyundai have bought back our 2019 Kona EV because of their recall on the main high powered battery pack. This fault could lead to a fire and in this video I'll take you through the timeline of events and why I decided to initiate a buyback with our car. On the 1st of July 2019 I collected our brand new Hyundai Kona SE Edition 64kW car. We paid £33,360 for the car. I'm recording this video on Friday the 7th of January, which means we've had the car for two and a half years. Let's turn back the clock and give you a bit of a high level timeline regarding the problem which eventually turned into a global recall of around 76,000 Hyundai Kona EVs built between 2018 and 2020. Earliest uh, report that I found when I was doing sort of desktop research was July 2019 with our Kona EV in Canada. I'll put some, some of the links down below in the description if you want to go and have a look at them. But that was the first fire that I came across. Then again on October 2019 in South Korea there were reports of three fires occurring during the year, all Kona EVs. More photos started appearing in the press and online in the middle of 2020 and you know this was just more than an isolated a case it would seem to appear. There was lots of chatter on forums and there were YouTube videos about the problem but still really no formal word from Hyundai. I had an email with the subject line product enhancement inspection for KL19 LVO, it's the reg of our car. It doesn't say what the product enhancement is, <laughs> however a quick check online revealed various theories and hypotheses. The most plausible related to two Konas that had caught fire, one in Montreal, Canada and one in Daegu, South Korea. The fires that happened back in May 2019, a Hyundai have never released the reasons why uh, from their investigations one year on and it appears that they still don't know the reason for the fires or at least they don't want to make it public. However, on the 11th of June 2020, Hyundai released the following statement. Investigations in Canada and South Korea into the matter are ongoing. Customer safety is our highest priority at Hyundai and we are constantly looking to improve our products. Hyundai Motor Company has since released an update to the vehicle's battery monitoring system while increasing the battery's performance and longevity. The update also contains additional diagnostic health monitoring to the high voltage battery and cells to ensure the continued quality performance of the vehicle. This service campaign is available globally, including Canada and the US, for all 2019 and certain 2020 models at no charge to the customer. These enhancements have already been applied into new vehicle production. So I'm guessing this is what the recall product enhancement email I received was all about. On the 17th of July 2020, a trip to the Hyundai dealer for our car's 10,000 mile service. Um, while I was there, they also stated that there was a recall on the BMS, the battery management system. This update was 00D005. Skip along to the 10th of August 2020. Voluntary recall of 25,000 Kona EV cars is announced publicly by Hyundai. October, 8th of October 2020, uh, Hyundai may recall 25,564 units due to faulty manufacturing. 11th of October 2020, car fires prompt Hyundai Mo Motor to expand recall to overseas. 23rd of October, Hyundai could expand recalls over the Kona EV fire risk. 10th of November, Kona EV fires put brakes on Hyundai Motor and LG Chem joint venture in Indonesia. Yeah, this is a, a clip from my video, my YouTube video in November 2020. The Kona covered just 79 miles in the month and now has a total mileage of 10,482 miles. 
Um, the Kona hasn't been charged for the month as we did very little mileage and I'm sort of tending not to use it at the moment uh, in case it bursts into flames. Uh, yeah, it's on the recall list. It's actually been booked in with Hyundai for the battery recall fault check on the 14th of December. So I'll update you on that once I know the outcome of that. And uh, they also updated the BMS software, they, which I knew was battery management software. Our Hyundai dealer apparently uh, ran a safety check on the battery and installed the new firmware update to the BMS software. This was supposed to resolve the battery fire issue, and this was the second of the BMS updates. 18th of December 2020, a global approach seems to be fragmented from Hyundai. They're stopping sales um, in Korea following battery fires and recalls. Hyundai is still keeping quiet with no official announcement as to the, the whys and wherefores on all the fires. Certainly haven't been informing the owners. January 2021, uh, more fires, recent recall, uh, Hyundai Kona catches fire. That's the one that's had the BMS update. So it's obviously that that wasn't working. Another one on the 26th of January, um, another Kona catches fire after the uh, battery management software update. Um, 9th of February 2021, I took the car back to the Hyundai dealer for another BMS update, 00D118. And this was the third BMS update, and still no direct contact from Hyundai. Um, 18th of February 2021, I was back again to the dealer, this time for a different recall, 01D002, which was an ESP update. Finally, later in February, Hyundai announced a recall of nearly 82,000 vehicles worldwide because of a fire risk. And this is almost 18 months after the initial reports of fire back in um, early 20 or mid 2019. Still uh, no direct contact from Hyundai. In March 2021, more Kona's self-combusting even after the BMS updates, lawsuits and accusations about poor handling of the battery fires and the recall process are uh, um, abound over the internet. 23rd of April 2021, I received an official recall announcement from Hyundai for R forward slash 2021 forward slash 087 high battery assembly replacement. And this stated it was a two stage recall process. Stage one was limit owners being asked to limit the state of charge to 90%, recommending do not park inside a garage or near your property until the battery has been replaced. Um, there was a different approach globally, depending on where you were. Um, I know some owners in, the, in Canada and the States, actually the dealers picked their cars up and held on to them until they had a battery, which was sometime months before they had the car back. There was different levels of compensation. So it was um, $200 in um, America, as far as I'm aware. In the UK, we were offered a £30 compensation, which could only be redeemed if you use the Hyundai charging app. I don't use it. So it was actually a bit of a meaningless gesture from their part. They said um, the stage two would be the battery replacement, which would happen um, in the, later in the year then radio silence. So nothing from Hyundai during May, June, July, August, absolutely nothing from them. June 2021, uh, more Kona fires, again with cars that had the BMS software update. In the meantime, on the 17th of August, our car went for its um, two year service. Whilst there, I was informed of another recall outstanding, which was 11D or 11D043. No one could tell me what this fourth BMS software update was for and what the implications would be afterwards. As you can imagine, by this time, I've had th three other updates and this is the fourth one and it still hasn't fixed it. So I'm getting a bit concerned. The dealer said, when I asked them what it was, um, they said, well, it's a bit like getting new software on your iPhone. It's just an update. So basically there were no helps whatsoever. So in the end, I contacted Hyundai UK over Twitter and uh, they were a little bit more helpful and this is the answer they gave. But it was sort of around this time and 
all over the, the time since I've had the car, there's just a lack of information and a lack of knowledge and a lack of communication from Hyundai. Um, a disparity between what the dealer says and what Hyundai have said. So really on the back of this lackluster lack of care and for their customers, I decided to write Hyundai to Hyundai on the 17th of August 2021, outlining the issues and requesting that they buy back my car. I didn't get a response to that letter. The next communication from them came at the end of September, a letter dated the 27th of September from Hyundai confirming the recall. So on the 5th of October, I still hadn't had a reply from my original letter. So I wrote to Hyundai again and sent this one recorded delivery. At the end of October, I received a phone call from Hyundai apologizing for the delay. The case manager um, for the UK recall set out the options for the buyback, which I requested, or she said we can actually push your battery pack up the order and jump it up the queue as it were and it would be get um, completed just before Christmas and I said I'd make a decision once they came back with a price and the lady said she'd phone me back in three days time with the price no phone call arrived I called again three weeks later and was given the buyback price of £26,625 I stated that uh, webuyanycar.com had already given me a price of 27,625 pence and they're offering me more money and I'm not even their a customer of theirs. You know, I'm your customer and I don't feel you're looking after me with your actions to date. You've shown a lack of ownership of the issue, broken promises and offered a paltry 30 pound compensation, which I can't even use. She apologised and said she would work out the price based on our mileage, which may give a better price and I will call you tomorrow, she said. I said, well, you said you'd call me in a couple of days and that was three weeks ago and I'm still waiting and I had to call you. She apologised and said, well, it's just me working on this UK recall case. To which I said, well, to be honest, that's not really my problem. It's your company's choice only to assign one person. You need to take it up with your bosses, not give it to me as an excuse. I requested all future correspondence via email. So on the 9th of um, November 2021, I received an, e um, an email from the lady at Hyundai stating a price of 28,736 based on mileage. I accepted the offer and replied accordingly. So from the 9th of October through to the 2nd of January, I waited for the money to come into my bank account. It finally arrived on the 2nd of January 2022 and I emailed to confirm the arrival of the funds and I posted back the key with a completed V5 um, to Hyundai so they could arrange a pickup of the car. The AA turned up on the 5th of January 2022 um, and took the car away. We paid 33,360 for the car on the 28th of June, 2019, as I mentioned earlier. We've had the car for two and a half years. Its mileage was 13,715 miles. And in that time, it's lost 4,626 pounds in depreciation, which actually works out about 7% depreciation per year, which I feel is actually really very good as most brand new cars suffer from sort of mind-numbing depreciation in the first year, let alone two and a half years later. Um, so yeah, EVs do seem to keep their value much higher than the, um, the ICE equivalents. And I don't think Hyundai did me any sort of favours on the price, you know, get me the best price they can. After all, they're, you know, they're to run a business, a commercial business, so they want to spend as less as they can. So that was the cap price, the car auction price that they gave me. Well, finally, after I pushed back against it. Um, so I've had a bit of time to think about it. And upon reflecting the car's last software update to the BMS, the fourth update, it really did cripple the car in terms of its charging. So let me give you some examples of how the charging speed had been throttled back. And remember, the owners had agreed not to charge their cars over 90%. And it's not as if 
you know, we're doing that slow crawl from 90% to 100% state of charge in these following examples. They're all charged up to or below 90%. So we're going to give three examples. Our first one is Sunday the 5th of December 2021. I plugged into one of the 14 pod point public 7 kilowatt chargers at Rushton Lakes. We were there all day. We were running a stall for our glass in an um, craft in an open air market. So yeah, we were there all day. So I plugged in at 9.35 a.m. and unplugged at 16.41 p.m. So that's seven hours and five minutes of charging. How much do we add during that time? 15.4 kilowatt hours. The car only had a 50% state of charge at the end of the charging. <laughs> I expected it to be like 90% by the end of seven hours charging on a seven kilowatt charger. Remember, it's a 64 kilowatt battery pack and it was a 50% when it had finished charging. So, yeah, phenomenal how slow it was. And I thought, well, you know, perhaps it's the charger or it's the car that are setting the settings on the car. Perhaps I'd set the charge rate to minimum in the car, which you can do. So, no, nope, no, nope, I checked it and afterwards it was fine. It was set to maximum charge rate. So I thought, well, perhaps it's a one off, perhaps it's a 40 slow charger. Oh, uh, and before people jump into the comments <laughs> complaining about me hogging a charging point all day, there's uh, 14 charging points at Rushton Lake. Um, my plan was to charge here to 90% state of charge and then move the car. But, you know, that said, the car park is always rammed anyway with people circling to find a space um, once they become available. So no matter where I parked, I would have been in a space all day. The following weekend was another craft fair at the same place. It was on for both weekends. So at Rushton Lakes again for both days. I plugged into a different 7 kilowatt charger. And we've used these charges with the Tesla and it, the Tesla just gulps up the charge. Um, there's 7 kilowatts um, there. Uh, seven kilowatt chargers, there's even some 22 kilowatt chargers on site and they, you know, they just work fine, they're very good. They've been reliable, consistent with, with their power supply. So on the Sunday, the um, sorry, on the Saturday, um, 11th of December, I plugged in at 8.45, finished the charge at um, 17.06, so five past five, six minutes past five, eight hours and 20 minutes of charging, 18.1 kilowatts added. The car was set to 90% charge at maximum rate of charge and we finished at sort of 55% state of charge. The following day I plugged in 9.29 a.m. finished the charge at 16.27 half past four six hours 57 minutes added 15 kilowatts finished at 79% state of charge. And it really hit home to me that we would not be able to use the car on a long trip because with, the, <laughs> with you know normal slow charging, let alone trying to do rapid charging, the BMS software updates have basically crippled the car's ability to accept any decent rate of charge. Let me know in the comments below if you've had the Kona and uh, in this affected batch and are still having issues with charging speed. Ah, so yeah, that's it. That's my rant. Um, Kona's gone. We've purchased a short range second hand EV. I'll do a video on that once it arrives. Um, and obviously I'll let you know what we end up with. All right. Take care. Cheers. Bye.